Hey, it's Wendy from EcoVeganGal.com and welcome back to EVG Uncensored. This video is going to be a little bit about fitness, continuing that journey, as well as a few other thoughts that I want to share. So it's kind of a, a summary today. Okay, well, I'll start with the fitness side of it. In my last video, <laughs> which was so funny to me because I recorded it at the beginning of January and then got sidetracked for a few weeks and posted it weeks later. So I apologize for making it, if, I don't know if it confused anyone because I was referring to things that had already happened. But um, it just was a great example of how sometimes these videos don't get up quite as, as soon as I would like them to. But anyways, uh, this month has been flying by. I don't know about you, but it's like I kind of started to set these intentions for 2014 and I am working towards them, but I just felt like this month has just been scrambling. In fact, the past probably three months have just felt all over the place and I'm really trying to resolve that because it's not the greatest feeling. I wake up in the morning just like, I don't know, I feel like there's just so much going on and I want to have some order to it. Um, I'm trying to take more notes and, and maybe do some more meditations. I'm also doing this manifestation class that my friend Kelly Bennett is putting on, which has been helping. And I've had this manifestation journal from her that has just been sitting on my desk somewhere back here. Um, and it needs to be worked on. But for some reason, I keep procrastinating this beautiful thing that she put together for me that she's teaching this whole class on. Um, I don't know. I find it intimidating, I think. And I'm also afraid to commit to things because I, I don't want to break any promises to myself or to other people. And sometimes I commit to doing something every day and then it doesn't end up happening because something else takes place. And I'm sure that many of you can relate to it. It's That is something that I have a lot of guilt over. There's so much that I want to accomplish. And actually... I'm going to be doing a review for Eco Vegan Gal in this book called Creative You, but I highly recommend it. And basically, it helps you figure out your personality type through the famous, what is it called? Um, Myers Briggs? Is that what that's called? Um, the, basically, the famous uh, personality type test. And this book is really neat because it breaks it down and it makes it really easy to understand your personality and what your strengths are. And the first time I did the test, I um, thought that I was one personality type, and I, then I read the description, and I, I felt really confused by it. I thought, okay, either this book is not accurate, or I don't fall into any category. Maybe I'm like in some wishy-washy category. And I was so frustrated. And then last night, I decided to really study all the different personality types. They basically have, um, I think it's eight different factors, and that's how you kind of put together what type you are. And then they have, um, what is it, 16 factors out of that, depending on what you choose in each category. And I went through and realized that I was something that I didn't think I was. And I'll talk more about this when I do the review on this book. But it really got me motivated. And it also helped me kind of solidify this, this idea I had about myself, which was that, um, let me see where it is. Something. It was something about... Oh yeah, here it is. The possibilities are usually more exciting than the actual doing. And this personality type often leaves projects unstarted and unfinished, which is really me. So you must take back, step back and take a moment to consider how your ideas can be put into practice while focusing on deadlines and sharing. This amplifies your strengths. So I really want to focus in this year on understanding how to complete things. I suppose that this has been a little bit of a weakness of mine for a while where I op I take on way too much and then I don't follow through with it all and give this a comment if you can relate to this or maybe find a way to overcome it. Um, I think it's just that, that exactly what it says is this a possibility of all these different ideas in my head. And so even when I write down a to-do list, I never come back to the to-do list. Sometimes I do, but not on a regular basis. Or I write out this to-do list and I still feel like there's so much in my head that I'm forgetting. And one thing that I've been struggling a lot with lately is just the, the amount of 
information and, and uh, sources of information that we have right now. It's it's really intense, and people always ask me like how I manage to be on social media and all these different social mediums out there. Um, and I really enjoy it, but it definitely feels really scattered. And a huge thing that I'm coming across right now is being so spread out. I receive information from people in so many different ways. So I've got email, phone calls and text messages, Facebook messages, Facebook comments, Twitter messages, Twitter comments, Instagram comments. Uh, I don't really check Pinterest comments, but those are there too. Um, and LinkedIn messages, and then, so that's already, what, 10 right there. Plus YouTube, so YouTube is all the comments, and I have, I think, five different YouTube channels. So really, I'm receiving input from at least 15 sources right now, and no wonder I feel so overwhelmed. But I also don't have the desire to cut back on any of that because everything serves a different purpose and there's a different audience in each sense. So I'm really right now trying to figure out how to handle it. Usually the way I handle it is I just prioritize mentally. So whatever seems and feels the most important to me at the moment, that's what I end up uh, doing. So if I feel like an email needs to be responded to right away, I re reply right away. If it can wait a few hours or a few days, then I put it off. And if I totally forget about the email, then it might not be that important anyways. And the same thing is with all the messages and comments out there. Um, and I just wonder how it's ever going to be possible. Like The bigger that I get, the more people that I'm reaching, the more information that's coming in and demand there. No wonder people have assistance. So the 2014, if I haven't mentioned it in a video yet, is all about getting help. So I've slowly been working uh, on that in 2013. I have an amazing assistant that I work with part-time, or very occasionally I should say, and I have this incredible apprentice team of people. So if any of you are watching, you guys help me so much. But even them, it's hard for me to manage the people that help me. So <laughs> it's like I don't even have time to talk to people so that they can help me further. But um yeah, so that's where I'm coming from, and that also explains why the videos don't get up as frequently as I would like them to. There's just there's so much to handle. Anyways, um, and just on a last note, that's part of the reason why I really know I need to work on this manifestation journal, is I feel like this would be a great way for me to get everything down, to download my information morning and or night, and to also track all of the progress that I'm making, and I would encourage all of you to do that with me. So if I do that on a consistent basis, you'll be sure to see some video content on that. Um, so quick notes, because this video is always already getting kind of lengthy, um, I just wanted to give an update on the fitness side of things. So I got a little thrown off during the holidays, as I mentioned in the last video. Uh, when I was out of town for two weeks, I think I only worked out three times during that time with my mom, but it was fantastic. I loved all of that. And then coming back to LA was also challenging. Um, trying to go at least every other day, and this week has been really successful. In the last video, I mentioned that I was going to try out TRX for the first time, and I did, and I've been going to that class more than anything, and that has been fantastic. I love it. It's all strength training with your body weight. It really hasn't been that hard. The hardest part for me is the mental side behind it, where sometimes it feels a little too slow paced and I'm like looking at the clock the whole time wondering when the class is going to be over. But the newest thing that I'm going into this class in is not worrying so much about how I'm physically feeling, but mentally feeling. And put, getting myself into this mindset where I'm not worrying about the time. I'm focused on the present moment, which is a constant struggle for me. And so any opportunity that I have to practice that is wonderful. So just taking that time to say, all right, I'm focused on this one movement that we're doing and I'm going to focus on getting the most out of it. I'm going to feel the strongest after it and work through the burn and enjoy it and just have fun and let go of this weird thing I have about when is this class going to be over? So that's been a nice little exercise. I've also been pairing that with something called Sculpt Class. And again, I promise I'll be doing a dedicated video just in the studio that I'm going to 
at some point. But um, I'm going to that this evening. And it's funny because some nights I feel really, or some days I feel really excited to go to my workout class and other times I'm looking for any excuse not to go. But I also feel like the more consistent I am about working out, the more, the easier it is to go to class because I'm really after those results and I'm into that habit, I'm into that pattern. It's just like anything else. So it's so, so, so important to stick to a schedule to make it a habit. And um, I really would like to see results faster. I think I've been working out close to two months now. And in the beginning, I thought that I would have these great results by now. But because of vacation and because of maybe a little extra eating during the holidays and not going as frequently as I intended to, uh, my body still has a long way to go. But it also may be that it's a lot slower to get into shape than we often realize. And I think that's such an important thing is so many people want to lose weight right away, like within a week or two or a month at most. And honestly, it takes so much time for our bodies to shift. It takes time for us to mentally shift, physically shift. Um, it takes time for the habits to become part of your life. And um I'm anticipating it's probably going to take closer to six months or maybe even a year to really feel great and, and excited about the progress that I'm making. So we'll see. But I'm just kind of open to it and not putting a time stamp on it. I've also been hiking a little bit. Um, I've been hiking, I think, three times in this new year, which is nice because I kind of took a break from that while I was going to all these different fitness studios and really forgot how wonderful it is to be out and the nice thing is, is because I've been doing so much weight training, my legs and the, my whole body is feeling so strong that hiking has become so much easier. So it's a lot more pleasant. I feel like I have so much more endurance and uh, I'm trying to incorporate hiking at least once a week, which is good and for me and for Evie. It's fun to take her outdoors, and it's a great way to spend time with friends. Every hike that I've been on has been with other people, and it's, you know, you catch up, you talk, you get fresh air, you look around. There's always something interesting out in the Los Angeles trails to see, other people, animals, beautiful views. It's great. And while I was hiking last time, I was with a friend who's really into CrossFit, so I think I'm going to end up trying my first CrossFit class. I know nothing about it. All I really know about CrossFit is that it's a lot of people on the paleo diet do CrossFit, and that might not even be accurate. Maybe that's just my, my view of it, but... Um, I know it involves lifting weights and circuit training, I think. Um, I don't know, but it's exciting because I don't know much about it, so I'm looking forward to trying out. My friend says that her studio offers some free classes there, so I will certainly update you on how that goes, but I would love to hear from you if you've tried CrossFit. And same with TRX, too, any input that you have there. Um, a couple other things is that recently, in the past week, my... Um, Facebook wall has ended up having uh, a lot of content about some animal issues that have been going on. Uh, first of all, there was the wonderful things happening in Taiji, Japan. And when I say wonderful, I'm very sarcastic because it is the annual dolphin uh, capturing and slaughtering, and it's been absolutely horrible. And my heart has felt so strained from all of that. Um, just not knowing what to do and if there is anything I can do. But I got a great newsletter from the um, is it Oceanic Preservation Society, I think, OPS. Um, and they're involved with the movie The Cove, which if you haven't seen it, is an absolute must. And they have such great information in their newsletter, so I would recommend that you subscribe to it. Um, they sent me this wonderful newsletter with all these great details about how you can get involved and, and make a difference. And even though the annual slaughtering has, I believe, come to an end this year. There's so much more that we can do through for the next year until it happens again. I think it's only once a year. I'm actually unclear about that. But, um, you know, I, I really feel like it's important to get involved right away and do it whatever, however you can, even if it's just telling fr friends and family about the details and encouraging them not to go to zoos or marine parks like SeaWorld where they're, you know, getting these animals from Japan in these horrible ways. Encouraging people to, you know, not support anything directly related to this and look into companies that are involved 
It's also important to recognize that people in Japan are eating dolphin, and even though we don't do that, at least as far as I know, in America, or maybe it's very uncommon, but just to be more conscious about that. Maybe that's happening at seafood restaurants without people even realizing it. So looking more into that, those sort of topics, educating yourself, educating people around you, and doing it in the most compassionate way possible, in a way that's not angry, but a way that is concerned and wanting to inform people so that people will actually listen to you. That's always my approach, is to do it in a conversational manner. I don't want to scare off anybody, especially people that are already a little wary of veganism. So I try to just say it in a very heartfelt way, in an open way, and not a judgy way, but just hear the facts. This is what's going on, and this is how you can get involved. So you can check out my Facebook if you want to see what I've been posting there. And along the same lines, I also got this press release uh, or media alert from Toronto Pig Save, and they were spreading the word about um, uh, pigs being transported to slaughterhouses in extreme weather. I think it was like under 30 degrees or something. As you know, there's extreme weather happening all across the country, and um, these animals are being transported. So they're on their way to their death and suffering before they even get there, before they're even put in the horrible conditions that are a slaughterhouse. And it's heartbreaking on so many levels. And the woman, uh, Joanne MacArthur, I think, who's behind the amazing documentary The Ghost in the Machine, took these incredible photos of these pigs on the truck. And they're so, so heartbreaking because here these pigs are in freezing cold weather, but still just looking through the cracks of the truck with, with these eyes of, you know, sadness and yet hope. You can still see there's life in these pigs, and there are these people touching the pigs and giving the pigs water from the outside, and they're so grateful for it. And it's just this conflicting collection of images of, you know, sadness, yet, yet hope on a certain level, of just showing that connection between animals and humans that really, really touched me in a deep way. So I shared that on Facebook and Tumblr and all of that, and I would encourage you to check it out and reshare it and learn more about it and get involved. Um, I think these pictures are so powerful to spread these on social media, to show them to people who are choosing to eat uh, pig products. Who knows? Maybe they'll see one of these photos and have a change of heart. Um, you know, we have to make that connection between animals and, and what they look like and how they feel and what they're going through through and show people that these animals deserve to live. Um, it, it's, it's such an important thing and I'm so grateful for organizations and people that are getting involved with this to spread the word and to educate all of us. Um, and for, on the last note, since this, move, this video is all already really long, um, I actually got to speak at an, a school recently, a few days ago, and it inspired me on in so many amazing levels. These kids were so intelligent and eager for information, and their teacher is actually vegan, so these kids were already very well educated on veganism, as well as organic and non-GMO and, and so many important topics. It was such an inspiring thing. and. Perhaps I'll make a, a longer video talking about my experience there, but I was really, really grateful. So if any of you are interested in being an educator and doing talks, I would explore the option of speaking to children because it's such a different experience from speaking to adults, especially because we can impact kids when they're young and when they're, they're interested and they're open and their hearts are so much more connected in a lot of ways than we are as adults. So I just didn't want to leave these kids. I wanted to talk with them and answer their questions and just stay with them and be with them. You know, like you connect with them on this amazing emotional level. So if you have an opportunity, even if it's just people that you know, not it doesn't have to be at a school, but remember that kids are very important to educate and there's so many great resources out there for children of all ages check out books like um, Ruby Roth's collection of books I, I'm completely blanking on the names of them but she has several illustrated children's books that are fantastic conversation starters and um, also Say Word I think her book is about pregnancy 
but um, I'll, you know, there are more resources out there that, are, that aren't coming to mind. But look into those if you're interested. If you have your own children or children in your life, um, finding ways to speak with them about these topics is so wonderful if you can do it in a gentle, loving way that the kids will receive. And you might get so much more reward out of this than you ever realized. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I love hearing from you as always. Whatever you want to comment on in this video, thanks for sticking through to the end if you're still here, and uh, I will be with you soon for the next video, whenever that may be. All right, bye.